Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fireside Thoughts. It's day 13 of Fireside Thoughts. We are halfway through Advent. How are you doing on your expectations of the coming Lord, right? This is what Advent is all about. And today we're going to continue on with our investigation of the amazing mother of Jesus, Mary. Can you think of three things that make you really happy? And this does not need to be like super churchy, super, super spiritual or anything like that. Three things that make you happy. Do you come up with them quickly? Immediately when I think of three things that make me happy, I think of Disney World. I think of musicals. And I think about dancing. All three of those things make me super happy. Christmas, of course. Okay, that was four. Sometimes the things that make us happiest, though, are things that we just don't remember that they make us happy and we kind of take them for granted. You know what that expression means, right? That you just kind of assume that that's always going to be the way it is. You forget to be grateful for it. Like, I think about maybe some of you because we're in a different generation. So I know that you take for granted that you can watch an entire season of a TV show at the press of a button. But when I was your age, we had to wait a whole week between installments of that show. So you've learned to take your access to entertainment like music and TV shows and movies for granted because it wasn't always like that. But what else might you take for granted? You know, the fact that maybe you have a safe home or that your parents are always going to be there for you. Some of these things we forget to be grateful for. We assume that it's always going to be that way. But Mary, one of my heroes of the Bible, excuse me, from the Bible, she didn't take things for granted. And today we're talking about that moment when she reconnects with her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth announces that she is pregnant and she's going to be having, we know, John the Baptist will be her son. Mary knows that she's pregnant and she's there to share her news with her cousin Elizabeth. And in that moment, in that incredible moment, what does Mary do? Mary bursts into song. She demonstrates her incredible joy. And you can find this in your Bible in Luke chapter 1 and starting at verse 46. Let me read a little bit of it for you. It's titled Mary's Song in a lot of versions of the Bible, or um, sometimes it's called the Magnificat, which is, I believe, the Latin title for it. She says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. What is really the theme of that song? It's immense gratitude. It's immense praise for the amazing things that God is doing and referring to herself as a humble servant. One of the things that we have to remember, guys, about our relationship with God is that He is our provider. He is considered Jehovah Jireh. He's the giver of all good things. Our homes, the shelter that we have, the clothes that we have, the food that we have, all of our blessings are provided by God. And we must not take those things for granted. We must recognize God for being the provider of all the good things that we have, just like Mary did. Let me leave you with this final thought. 
How are you going to remember that all good things come from God through His amazing grace? Have a good night. <laughs>